Let's take a look at the JavaScript's most popular front-end frameworks, the frameworks that you should probably know because they are the most popular. You'll run into them during your developer cycle. You'll probably need to learn some of these. The number one at the top, of course, we know React. It's been around the longest and it is maintained by Facebook slash Meta, right? React is also extremely prevalent because you've got the core React the core React JavaScript engine, and that engine can then power front ends like uh, user interfaces on the web, user interfaces on mobile, and within desktop apps. It can do way more crazy things too, like render videos. So if there's one framework to learn, you'll probably wanna learn React. This is the one uh, most, most businesses are using. And it is pretty straightforward, right? It mixes everything together within code and HTML and the view layer. And it's easier to sort of see how things interact. And there's a template as well. This template engine is real time. So as data changes, you can make sure that that is represented on the screen through state engines, which is really, really powerful. I love it because you can mix in, mix in your code, mix in the component. And now you've got these, these components, then you can then throw into different places. You can enumerate them. It's just really powerful overall. Ah, see, you can enumerate them three videos in once. Nice. The second most popular JavaScript front end framework is going to be HTMX. Now we know HTMX is a pretty, there is a nice capability with HTMX here. If we take a look, the idea is no JavaScript. You don't have to know any software engineering really. You just have to write some simple markup and then it will, the framework in the backend will take care of everything for you. Now this is, it does require you to build your code and your server in a certain way. Though your front end now becomes accessible to more you, because you don't need to know JavaScript. You don't really need to know coding practices. You can just use HTML and simple markup attribute tags in order to describe how the page is gonna be interacting with a server API. Then of course, at number three, we have Svelte. Now Svelte's gonna be more in competition with React because it is a sort of a component-driven, fully orchestrated front-end framework and it's going to give you the same with templates and your ability to write code it is cleaner i do like there's less indentation here and so you've got this like you know contained svelte file you can also have a contained css which is great and number three the most popular front end javascript frameworks we have svelte which is going to be competing directly with react what i like about svelte is it's a lot cleaner from a syntax perspective right it's I like it because there's less indentation and it keeps the code clean. And what's great also is that it's just like React, everything's self-contained and sort of like it's nice svelte file, like a single file. And you do need to often have styles and data layer presentations in the code. And it's great to sort of merge all that together. Even state, so it helps you keep state uh, a little more simply. Oh, this is great. It's clean. You can kind of see where things align with each other, less indentation. And as a bonus, it's going to be faster overall. It's just built from, because React, I mean, if you've been to a React site, you know it typically tends to be a little bit slow. Like they, it chunk, there's ways to improve its performance, but you will typically, most of the time, run into a slower React site. Now, Svelte, there's still a lot of boilerplate that comes along with it, so it's not going to be as fast. It's just vanilla JavaScript script and CSS that is, I would say, the next step up. So if you're thinking of a nice alternative to React, Svelte is probably going to be an excellent choice. Then we have million, less than a kilobyte virtual DOM implementation. No way. Make React 70% faster. Drop in optimizing compiler for React. Oh, I was just talking about how React was so slow. Well, if you use million, a Apparently, you can just bypass all that. All right, so Preact is sort of a rewrite. So if we look at this list here, we've got benchmarking with JavaScript, React itself, pretty darn slow. I've, it's a, it is slow. Then you've got Preact, which looks like it's twice as fast. But if you pipe in million JS, it's gonna go even faster. All right, well, if you're looking for that speed, let's drop in some optimization here. You can see why that is, po that's definitely gonna be popular there. And then, then you've got Vue.js, which is a, another competitor to Svelte and React. It says it's progressive, which means, you know, it tries to only load what's needed from the user's end perspective, which is great because that's going to be a faster user's experience. The browser has to download less, it has to come render less, it has to interpret less, which means it's a faster user experience. The, the examples they have here are similar to Svelte, for example, where they've this nice separation of concern, but it's all a nice one file. Excellent pattern, really good pattern. I love it. Yeah, this is fantastic. So this is uh, Vue is very similar to Svelte from that perspective, nice and clean. So Svelte and Vue would definitely be closer competitors compared to React. 
although all three of them are options when you're building application experiences for end users. Front end frameworks are gonna be React, HTML, Svelte, Million, and Vue.js. So we see we've got two, two React related items here, Million and React. So just add in Million to React and you'll get a better React.